Home buyers, are you in the market for a home but tired of competing or losing out to the competition? Check out my tips for today's competitive market and how you can put yourself in a position to get more offers accepted. When it comes to buying a home, 86% of buyers ended up contacting an agent to represent them in the purchase, but 73% interviewed only one agent before making a decision. Based on this data and the 90% failure rate within the industry, it is sad but true that the probability of getting bad service is high when buying or selling a home. You wouldn't visit one school when looking at colleges for your kids, just like you wouldn't look at one car when making a car purchase or even a pair of sneakers. So knowing all of your options and services available will help in making a better educated decision and to compare the knowledge, experience, and value that each agent brings to the table and how it best fits for your needs. At times, the process of preparing to buy a home could get exhausting and going out to look at houses is way more fun than preparing for it. Many buyers depend on or seek advice from friends or family who have done it before and although this makes sense and is a good starting point, the way they did it may not be the best way for you. Just like interviewing agents, many buyers spend very little time researching their financing options. The purchase of a home should be broken down into three phases, financing, acquisition, and closing. Each requires its full attention and is a building block into the next step. The mistake I see most buyers making is that they rush through each step or do all of them at the same time, which then leads to making poor decisions. For best results, break it down to three steps, focus and understand each one so you are not juggling too much at the same time, and give each part of the process the full attention that it deserves. There is a belief amongst buyers that working directly with the listing agent will result in getting a better deal or some type of advantage over competing buyers. And I assure you this is completely false. And if any listing agent is telling you this, it's a huge red flag. Understand that listing agents legally work in favor of and have a fiduciary duty to the seller, which is outlined and agreed upon in the listing agreement before the property is even put on the market. Now it is perfectly legal for a listing agent to represent both buyer and the seller and that is known as a dual agency relationship and in the state of New Jersey real estate agents are required to disclose how they intend to work with both buyer and seller in a real estate transaction. These agreements are sometimes misunderstood and have a stigma around them but in general they are used to provide clarity and outline each party's accountability to that relationship. Remember, before you disclose any confidential information to any realtor or anyone within the industry, you should understand the business relationships available to you with that particular person. Bad preparation leads to low quality results. Using the wrong strategies at the wrong times may put you in a position to lose out on the desired home. This means that you need to understand the market you are buying in and the strategy that will put you in a position that gives you the highest probability of obtaining that home. The most common mistakes I see buyers making is using financing that doesn't allow them to compete in many ways and submitting offers that have a very low probability of being accepted with the current market conditions. Granted, a lot of these strategies can and will work, but it comes down to understanding if this strategy that you are using will give you the best chance in the market that you are purchasing in. It's important to understand market conditions and how they affect you, as well as having a game plan of how you will approach the purchase within those parameters. We've all heard that a home is a good investment or know someone, usually a family member, who bought their home decades ago and the home is now worth exponentially more than what they bought it for, which tends to influence this idea, but this is not true for all buyers. Now I'm not saying you should stop your search now or avoid home ownership altogether. Understand that as a buyer purchasing a primary residence, the investment aspect we are most commonly referring to is the appreciation over the long term. So it matters on the type of home you buy, where you buy it, and how you buy it, and how that home can appreciate over time. All of this simply means is that you should always buy smart and understand what and why you are buying to put yourself in the best position now and for the future. In doing so, you will have a home that can be tapped into for equity or sold no matter how good or bad the market is, and you won't have to rely on economic conditions outside of your control to dictate whether you can or cannot move during a specific phase of your life. 
I hope this helped in organizing your thoughts and preparing for your home purchase. If you are in the market for a home, contact me today and schedule a meeting so together we can go over a personalized buying plan and a full review of all of your options to give you the best advantage over the competition in today's market.